this is Carol here at Metal Life Magazine. Uh, I am here, thank God it's Friday, but it's also Friday the 13th. Perfect for a metal as fuck interview. And on the phone with me, I have Phil of Poison Headache, the newest project to hit the metal streets. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's a nice sunny day for both of us in San Diego this uh, this Friday the 13th. So tell me, you're a very busy man. What's uh, What's on the books for you today? Obviously, this interview is starting it off, and then I'm going to start tracking some guitars in a little bit for uh, another project of mine, and doing a bunch of music shit, you know, and uh, that's how my days have been going lately, so I can't really complain. Obviously, you're very capable of doing multiple projects at once, but is it just that kind of thing where your tendency is to just want to do the most creatively that you possibly can, instead of just focusing on one band? You know, I like so many different things. So, you know, when I find these open windows of time that, you know, I can do something different, you know, I I try to go for that. And, you know, I've been, you know, so busy, you know, years ago when I was traveling and and writing with As Early Dying that there wasn't as much time for me to pursue other bands or other sounds that I wanted to do. So now it's kind of my time to start doing that. And that's how finding the, the time to get Poison Headache up and running finally worked out. And I think the first thing, obviously, uh, Poison Headache made its first big entrance onto the scene with your article that that Noisy so graciously put out. And they were saying, I loved the first line of that article where the author comments, he's so tired of mysterious bands, but in this case, it really works out for you because the music is so good. Uh, So I wanted to get a little bit from you, you know, with that not announcing the lineup at first. Why was this something that you guys really wanted to focus on? I mean, it's cool to just add mystery, obviously, when you're unveiling a new band and, you know, get people kind of just curious as what it is. And, you know, this reporting headache being such a different sound, I mean, it's, you know, I've always been doing heavy music, but, you know, just a different area of heavy music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was just kind of wanting to let the music kind of speak for itself, whereas opposed to like, oh, this, this guy from this band doing this, you know, I just really wanted to be just listening to the song and, you know, not not have people kind of, I guess, judge a book by its cover without even hearing the music first. Um, that was kind of the, the overall intention of it, so. Yeah, I think it works well in your favor because I think there's that tendency for fans to pick out from what you formally did or, or other things that that you're working on. It's easy for them to try to pick the elements out instead of just listening to Poison Headache as a clean slate, so I think the mystery really worked to your advantage in that way. I've seen it happen with Woven War. People are like, oh, this isn't... And ultimately, it doesn't matter what people not happy with or satisfied with it because Woven War, by their band, doesn't sound like As They Lay Dying. It's like, well, yeah, it's a different band like <laughs> entirely. That's why that's why the name's different, you know? Right. Like, So I, I think it's just tough for a lot of people to grasp that, but I think the, uh, the smarter people can kind of uh, <laughs> um, differentiate different bands. And talking about, um, once again, you know, you came up with a couple tracks initially, uh, Conspirator, but the big one that really caught my attention was Sin Eater. Uh, obviously, uh, there's some keywords being thrown out to describe your music, like the crust, punk, and the thrash. I love that opening riff. It just, it, it reminisces classic Toxic Holocaust to me, so that's that's really awesome. But what the other part of the song that really caught my attention was you've got this middle passage that sounds really occultish and really dark right before you go into this just ripping guitar solo that's absolutely amazing. So talk to me a little bit about what you're trying to achieve by taking the best of the underground sounds and yet trying to make something that sounds really modern and, and occult and dark. This this is a song that Andy sort of brought all the riffs and everything together and, you know, just with the drumming and just the energy of it, you know, ultimately we want, want to keep things fast, but yeah, that middle passage, like the bridge you're talking about, mm-hmm. that's where, where it kind of just shifted. It felt like it had to shift, you know, kind of a kind of slower kind of riff, slower drums. And then I felt vocally that, you know, there could be something more vibey with that. So I kind of put this like Alice in Chains kind of approach and added a ton of reverb and some, some different kind of harmonies and it kind of just sculpted it into just a more darker kind of different from the rest of the song. And then, then it's like, oh, kicks back in the gear and you know, with like the, the verse riffs and stuff, but oh, let's throw a guitar solo on there. So 
I think, you know, just trying to make the song overall dynamic. And, you know, we try to do that. You know, songs are pretty short for the most part, but we try mm-hmm. to keep things dynamic as much as we can when we can. What did you guys do? Th- decide to make that song public is is it just that level of dynamism that, that you were talking about that really stood out to you guys that's the first song on the album i think it just kind of just with how it starts it kind of just it's so direct and kind of punches you in the face and um that was one of the later songs that we had written in the process um and uh we <laughs> the first song we ever wrote together we're like oh this is going to be the first song on the album <laughs> Uh, and that, that, that's the track two on the, on the album. But then once we wrote, we wrote Thin Eater, it was like, wait a minute, this could start the album, you know? And, and then it, it just felt fresh for us. And so that's, that's kind of, I don't know, I, we feel like that's just a good first impression song for people to hear. It kind of sums up what our, our style is about. Um, and so the album is obviously, it's due out in a couple weeks now. Uh, typically, summer, too, is a really big touring season. So what's your plan as far as uh, how long you guys are, are going to promote the album release versus going out and playing some shows? <laughs> yeah, everyone's asking about touring and, and shows, and uh, we're starting to get a few things uh, kind of figured out. I, I've been on tour with several other bands. This band nails to the opposite end of the spectrum is Van Seosin, um, as well as putting out the new Woven Wild. And so I'm kind of figuring out maybe for fall to get Poison Headache to be doing some shows, uh, possibly at Brick by Brick. Yeah, we'll just kind of see where it goes from there. But for now, people can take in the album uh, during the summer and just kind of get used to the songs, you know, before we go out and play. Because it's always better to have, have the crowd kind of know the songs as opposed mm-hmm. to like taking it in at the show and you're like cool they're just standing there with their arms crossed so we'll give it a little bit of time and hopefully be out in the fall what was it like just growing up as a diehard metal fan and, and a musician while basically your whole life living in a town that never really had i mean i know san diego had its high points at, at one point you know when the jumping turtle was around things like that but it, it doesn't extreme it, it doesn't really uh completely live on a metal culture like what is what is that like for you being so successful in so many metal bands but having a very small scene basically your entire life yeah it it is kind of strange you know just living 30 miles out in the suburbs away from like downtown you know where all the the energy and the nightlife usually goes on but I mean, when I was in high school, early 2000s, like, there were, like, a couple Metallica dudes, metalheads, and then, you know, a guy like me who was getting more into, like, Swedish, like, uh, in flames or at the gates style stuff, and mm-hmm. everyone else that I was friends with who wasn't into metal music, it was just strange. You're like, well, you like that stuff? <laughs> everyone just, you know, like, punk was the, you know, pop punk being, you know, this is one of the capitals for that. And I was like, no, I want, like, the heavier, harder stuff. And then, you know, it was a, it was a good thing with places like The Scene back in the day um, that brought a lot of those bands. And, you know, like the Epicenter and um, Che Cafe and being able to still have those venues to, to go bands come through and play. And, you know, I used to go to Orange County, Chain Reaction, a lot of those shows. But, you know, it wasn't until I was over 21 where, you know, I could go to Brick by Brick and, you know, seeing really good shows. I played there when I was 18, <laughs> and I had to go straight on the stage and straight out the venue. Uh, I couldn't hang around in the venue because I was too young. So, now that I'm one of the owners of Brick by Brick, you know, it's just funny when I have to tell a kid, like, yeah, you can't be in here. Like, you can play, and then you have to leave the stage. Like, that's how we all do it. But, um, you know, I, from one of the first shows I went, like, seeing a show at Brick by Brick, I, like, fell in love with the place. And so, when we had the opportunity to to buy it, it was surreal. It's like, man, like we own this place now, and we're we're going to try to build that metal, that he- heavy music community back up in San Diego. Brick has been doing such a good job of that. Like when when people say, you know, sure, San Diego is not a metal town, but that certainly doesn't mean we don't have a metal scene. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And you know, I think it's just it's been dormant for a few years, and you know, we're we're just doing our best to get that back up and running because we see how how well these shows are doing and we you know know a lot of the people coming to the shows and they're excited about it and you know they keep coming back so that's what we want to keep doing 
And we're so happy that, that you're achieving so much, not only with your projects, but being able to take a very involved part, being in the venue and being a musician. You've done so much, not just for San Diego's metal, but, but for metal in general. So we thank you very much, Phil, for being on Metal Life here today. Poison Headaches album comes out everywhere June 3rd. Look for it. Buy it. Don't fucking download it. Go see him in the fall. And we are so excited to have you. Thank you again, Phil, for joining us. Thanks for having me.